2024 has been the year of bad decisions. Not only did I buy an Xbox 360 solely to play online games, only to find out that EA hates me, but I also invested thousands in solar eclipse glasses only for it to be cloudy here. And my latest brilliant idea was to wonder trade 1000 Pokemon on 3DS before the servers went offline forever on April 8th. It's such a great idea because, and I did the math here, it takes one minute on average to do a wonder trade. You gotta select the Pokemon, wait for someone to accept, watch the unstippable can trading animation, and then go through the whole Pokemon popping out of its Pokeball animation. So if I wonder trade 1000 times, that's equal to about 1000 minutes, or 17 hours. I could have spent my time more wisely by doing something like beating Pokemon Sword three times, or giving out free foot massages to the moms in my neighborhood again, but nope. I care about my audience too much, and I know how much they enjoy my suffering. But enough yampering, let's get to it. My first wonder trade in this long journey that began at the end of March saw Bulbasaur sent to someone from Hokkaido who I think is trapped in a basement. In return, I got a Caterpie named 69. Yeah, if they are trapped, I don't think it's against their will. Since I'm going in chronological national dex order, next up was Ivysaur. I timed the whole trade, and from the moment I tapped on Wonder Trade to the moment I saw the option to Wonder Trade again, it took 70 seconds. So my initial estimate was off by about 3 hours, meaning it could now take 20 hours to do this. In other great news, you can't trade Pokemon with special items attached. That meant I had to go back into the PC and remove every single Mega Stone from every single Mega Evolvable Pokemon, which added more time to this ordeal. Remember that whole suffering thing? You probably remember it more than Beedrill being able to Mega Evolve. Same with Scizor and Metacham. Getting back to it, Venusaur was sent to Minnesota, A eh, for a Mareep. Hopefully I don't have to count how many Mareep I get because I'll fall asleep. The Charmander line was next. Baby Charizard went to Mahina for a Volibi. Yes, it's pronounced Volibi like Lullaby, which you'd know if you watch my video on how to pronounce every Pokemon. Teen Charizard went to someone who won't forgive me. Except I won't forgive them for giving me a useless Magikarp. I mean, do you even splash, bro? And finally, the level 100 shiny Charizard that should have had a Charizard Knight X went to Mexico for a Gramble. The Yzard went to Jasmine in Italy. To finish up this section of the video, let's head over to the Pokemon that makes me want to Squirtle all over the place. Ash got a Squirtle and sent me a shiny Gyarados named Riptide in return. This was the first shiny of the whole saga. Would Wartortle continue the fun? Well, Andrew from Wisconsin disappointed the millions of people watching this video and sent me a Grubbin. Everyone in the comments type, Andrew? More like Bad Drew, am I right? As for Blastoise, it went to somebody in France who thinks being lonely is hard. Considering they gave me an Alolan Rattata, I can see why they're alone. Because I didn't want to be stuck in front of my computer for 17 hours, I took regular breaks. Wonder trading in the bathtub while getting a foot massage and while watching videos of people getting foot massages while in the bathtub. So there will be gaps along the way. But after trading an entire box of 30 Pokemon, I noticed something interesting. I didn't trade with a single person twice. I'd assumed the only people wonder trading so close to the deadline would be YouTubers desperate for content. But instead, I found a smattering of people across Japan and the US. It really was crazy to see so many people still active in the 3DS games. And it's also a bit sad because I imagine several of them had no ideas the servers were about to shut off. Now, let's be honest here for a second. We've all fantasized what it'd be like to live in the Pokemon world, fall in love with a Lopunny, and be the first person to legally marry a Pokemon after petitioning the government. Also, no one actually wants to watch me show the full 20 hours worth of wonder trading. I wish I faked my videos, but I actually did do all of this. I got about 10% of the way into my 1000 Pokemon journey and immediately regretted it, but thankfully I was just deep enough in that I deluded myself into finishing. In order to save you from the same mind-numbing fate that befell me though, I'm going to skip most of the boring stuff and get to what you all came here for. No, not a foot reveal, the juicy drama. April 1st is when I knew I was in trouble. There was a week to go and I had only done 200 wonder trades. That meant I'd have to do more than 100 trades per day to reach my goal. In terms of time, that'd be roughly 12 hours in a week. As much as I tried to power through, the odds were stack attacked against me. So I decided to call an audible. This would have been a perfect segue into a sponsorship, but when I contacted Amazon, they said I was on a list due to all the foot lotion that I order and ceased all communication. 
I'm not sure what's unusual about a swimming pool full of lotion to bait the moms in my area to come over, but I guess Amazon doesn't want my audience to know about their many services. Anyways, the change. I decided to place my focus entirely on legendaries. They're the most sought after Pokemon on the GTS, so it seemed like a great plan. Except a major issue arose. Special Pokemon can't be traded. Well, as you know from my previous Ultra Moon video, all of these Pokemon are 100% totally legit, which means some were obtained through special means and are stuck with me forever. So I lost the ability to trade 100 of the rarest Pokemon on the cart. Still, like my dog when I spray him with water as he starts eyeing up my Hisuian Electro plushie, I was undeterred. I grouped all the tradable legendaries together and, just like my dog, got down to business. Well, despite my best laid plans, things got massively socked up. As I was making my way through, I found an entire box worth of more special legendaries. To fill the holes, I kept borrowing good Pokemon from other boxes, leaving everything else patchier than a teenager's beard. Still, I powered on. Probably the worst part about this entire ordeal is that I couldn't really do anything else while wonder trading. Because I had the brilliant idea to track which countries I traded with, I had to pay just enough attention that doing anything else to cause me to miss the 5 second message showing where the Pokemon is going. On the bright side, this reinforced my idea to not stream the entire thing. I mean, I can barely be interesting enough for a 10 minute YouTube video. A 20 hour stream would have been unbear tickable for both of us. To help blast through the boring parts of this video, here's a quick rundown of some interesting moments in my journey. My first trade with someone from Canada came when I sent Clefable to Pierre, one of the very few people who would trade with me multiple times along the way. In true Canadian form, he thanked me in advance, but didn't apologize when I got a stinking Magikarp in exchange. Not long after, I traded with Pierre again. I sent him a shiny Jigglypuff. His chance at redemption saw me getting a Japanese young goose. Yeah, if you're listening, Pierre, I hope the other side of your pillow is always warm. Of course, I'm going to show you the 69th wonder trade. Because of duplicates and regional forms, though, Bellsprout wasn't the trade here. That honor instead belonged to Growlithe. I ended up 69 ing with Mitsuki from Germany, who sent me a shiny Mew. I had traded with Mitsuki not long before, getting a Hoopa in exchange for a Lowland Dog Trio. So it seemed like Mitsuki was on the same mission as I was. Around this time, I also learned that, unlike Megastones, Ultra Moon will automatically remove Zed Crystals when you try to trade a Pokemon holding one. You're not forced to pull out and remove it yourself. If I had any sort of editing skills, this is where I'd include a Phoenix Wright objection, because I uncovered a massive scandal. As I was looking back at all the Pokemon I'd received, I discovered Megastones attached to some of them. Shaman had a Scizorite, Mew had an Aerodactylite, and Hoopas had Audonite and Pidgeotite. So either you can only trade Pokemon holding an incompatible Megastone, or Game Freak just hates me. After more than 150 trades, I finally decided to change my Wonder Trade message. You can't choose a unique one like Sub to trust your pilot, because immature people abused the system in previous games, so your choices are relegated to pre-made ones. I perused all the way down to the current feeling section, and I gotta say, somebody at Game Freak must have been having a tough time. It starts off okay, but quickly devolves into, I want to have a purpose in life, and being lonely is hard. I mean, I get it, it just seems a bit much for a children's game. Jumping ahead, my first, and only, communication fail came with trade number 243, Suicune. Shortly after, I reached trade number 250, sending a shiny Registeel to Texas in exchange for a Lolan Vulpix. Hitting a quarter of my goal should have been cause for celebration. Instead, I realized there was no way I could do that three more times before the servers went offline forever. That meant another audible. Just like they were midterms, I bared down and set my sights on a much more manageable goal, 400 trades. With 24 hours to go until Wonder Trades would disappear forever, I reached the 40% mark and sent Ninjas to Nico in the Czech Republic and received a Petalil. But then I realized that 420 is a funny number and Wonder Traded 20 more times because I'm an adult. Also, 30 goes into 420, so for math making and box management purposes, it did make more sense. So for my 420th and final Wonder Trade ever on 3DS, I forced Minin to watch as I sent Plusle to Spain in exchange for a Rowlet. And that was it. My somewhat disappointing Wonder Trade journey had come to an end in lackluster purge fashion. If you're upset that I didn't reach the full 1,000 trades, just remember that Smosh asked if they could ride Splash Mountain 100 times and ended up doing it 8 times. So based on that math, I'm at least five times better than Smosh. But enough about how amazing I am, let's get to the recap. 
There isn't much reason to hold you in suspense when it comes to the countries I trade with the most. Japan is obviously at number one with 170 out of a possible 420 trades. And the United States added another 105 on top of that, meaning 65% of all my wonder trades came from just two countries. People from Japan also had the most creative messages. One player said they loved me, while the next said they wouldn't forgive me. It gave me flashbacks to my ex-wife. Surprisingly, France was in third, with many Germans also getting in on the wonder trade action. Probably the most interesting thing is that out of the top 10 most populated countries in the world, I only traded with three, the US, Brazil, and Mexico. And out of 195 countries, I only traded with 25 of them. But who cares about humans? I mean, they can't even learn Thunderbolt. You care about the Pokemon. Starting from the bottom, the top 10 Pokemon I received the most were Abra, Kangaskhan, Litten, Rowlet, and Slowpoke, all at 7 each, with Alolan Meowth at 8 and Alolan Rattata at 9. There were only 5 Pokemon to reach double digits, Pikapect with 11, Caterpie with 12, and Wingull with 14. And at number 1, we have a tie. Can you guess what they are? I'll give you a hint. One has their own video game, while the other is Donald Trump Jr. Stumped? Well, the Pokemon I received the most were Magikarp and Young Goose with 17 each. There aren't any surprising stats about the Pokemon I found, so I'll just list a few interesting things I found in the aftermath. First off, nicknames. There's the Red Gyarados called Riptide, a Skarmory called Starscream, a Young Goose called Azzy, which isn't special except for the fact that the trainer's name is Azzy, so they apparently named Pokemon after themselves, which is super weird, a Makuhita called Honda, which I'm assuming is after E-Honda, a Magnemite called The Plug, a Wingdoll called Toilet, a Spinda called Drunk, and the Caterpie called 69. I also received a single male Solandit because true evil exists in the Pokemon world. And what about Shinies? I sent out 420 of them, but how many did I get in return? It's possible I missed one along the way, but if I'm correct, I received a grand total of 12. They were Reshiram, Shaman, Cresselia, Lugia, Litten, Abra, Stantler, Golem, Zatu, Mesprit, Mew, and Halucha, and a few of them were even holding a Master Ball. Elsewhere, the shortest Pokemon trade I had was Pidgey at just 7 seconds, while the two longest were Zapdos and Cresselia tied at a 50 second wait each. It's also worth mentioning that the Vaporeon I traded away had Pokerus, which might explain why I haven't been feeling great lately. Ultimately, this whole Wonder Trade journey was like running a marathon. I've also never run a marathon. I meta grossly underestimated how long it would take to send out 1,000 Pokemon, giving me an even greater appreciation for YouTubers like Candy Eevee who've sat there and done this already. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go make other terrible decisions in life like preparing to spend all of my money in Pokemon TCG Pocket.